Numerous workers are injured or killed each year while working on energized electrical equipment. Many of these workplace injuries are a result of arc flash, a type of electrical explosion that results from a low impedance connection to ground or another voltage phase in an electrical system. The massive energy released in an electrical fault rapidly vaporizes the metal conductors involved, blasting molten metal and expanding plasma outward with extraordinary force. The radiant energy released by an electric arc is capable of permanently injuring or killing a human being at distances of up to 10 or even 20 feet. The best way to prevent arc flash is to do energize equipment before beginning work. However, there are exceptions for cases in which do energizing equipment would introduce additional hazards or in which the work can't be done with the system do energized. In cases where energized work cannot be avoided, you can reduce the potential dangers of an arc flash by following these four important steps. Number 1. Learn who is qualified to perform electrical work. Because of the severe and often devastating consequences of arc flash incidents, which claim at least one life every workday, the National Fire Protection Agency is using several strategies to facilitate worker safety, starting with the requirement that workers be properly qualified for the task being performed. The NFPA 70 definition of a qualified person is one who has skills and knowledge related to the construction and operation of the electrical equipment and installations, and has received safety training to recognize and avoid the hazards involved. Electrical workers who meet this definition of a qualified worker will be able to Determine the nominal voltage for the equipment or system Determine the required approach distances for electrical shock and burn hazards Distinguish exposed energized conductors and circuits from other parts of the equipment Properly select, care for and use the appropriate personal protective equipment for both shock protection and dark flash protection being properly qualified is just one of the safe work strategies found in NFPA 70. Other safe work requirements include performing work under an electrically safe work condition, whenever it is feasible to do so, and following prescribed safe work practices when creating an electrically safe work condition is not feasible. It is important to note that a person can be considered qualified with respect to certain equipment and methods, but still be unqualified in other situations. Number 2. Familiarize yourself with NFPA 70 arc flash and shock hazard boundaries. Numerous workers are injured or killed each year while working on energized equipment. As a result of accidents in the workplace related to arc flash, the National Fire Protection Association has developed specific approach boundaries designed to protect employees while working on or near energized equipment. The flash protection boundary is the farthest established boundary from the energy source. If an arc flash occurred, this boundary is where a worker would be exposed to a curable second degree burn. The limited approach boundary is the minimum distance from an exposed live component where unqualified personnel may safely stand. No untrained personnel may approach energized parks any closer in this boundary, unless under the supervision of a qualified worker and using proper personal protective equipment. The restricted approach boundary is the distance from an exposed part which is considered the same as making contact with the live part. Only qualified personnel wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, having specified training to work on energized conductors or components, and a documented plan justifying the need to perform this work may cross the boundary and enter the restricted space. Number 3. Know how to interpret arc flash warning labels. The National Electrical Code states that switchboards, switch gear, panel boards, industrial control panels, meter socket enclosures, and motor control centers, that are in other than dwelling units, and are likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized, require a label that warn qualified persons of potential arc flash hazards. Knowing how to interpret these labels are important in order to understand the risk involved with servicing a particular piece of equipment. Number 4. Understand the proper selection and use of personal protective equipment for the task at hand. The proper selection and use of personal protective equipment will reduce the risk of arc flash and other electrical hazards to workers. Personal protective equipment refers to items typically worn by a worker to provide protection from recognized hazards. Depending on the job task to be performed, protective equipment for the electric power industry generally includes 
safety glasses, hard hats, face shields, safety shoes, insulating rubber gloves with leather protectors, and flame-resistant clothing. Arc flash hazard is a subject that is undergoing increased discussion and scrutiny in today's safety-conscious environment. The intent of the standards in this area is to provide an increased level of safety for the electrical worker. Those involved in the design, implantation and evaluation of electrical distribution systems must have an understanding of arc flash hazards and how to evaluate the hazards, as well as minimize or mitigate the hazard to the electrical worker.